Welcome to the next English lesson. This is on Tuck Character Traits Part 1, Extension. This is Miss Donaldson. And Miss Anderson. Let's start with the do now. The first thing we always do is read our objective. The objective for today's lesson is I will analyze the effects of the character on the plot by correctly answering four out of five multiple choice questions about the short story, 11 by Sandra Cisneros. Cisneros. Cisneros, I believe is how you pronounce her name. All right, go ahead and review the objective and rate your current level of understanding uh, with regards to the objective. Push pause if you need to at this time to rate yourself. Now let's move on to number two. Use editing marks to revise the following sentence. Then write the corrected sentence on the lines below. All attention focused upon the wizened lady. Go ahead and push pause and use editing remarks and write the sentence below. When you're ready to move on, push unpause or play. Okay, now you can see the sentence with the editing marks that need to be corrected. As you can see, we need to capitalize all because it's at the beginning of a sentence. We also need to add a period at the end to signify that it's the end of the sentence. These are the only two corrections that need to be made today. Please make sure you write the complete sentence with the corrections on the lines below. Go ahead and pause if you need to or continue on to number three if you already did. Number three, find the meaning for the underlined word. The student council voted to amend the Constitution to permit only two alternate members instead of three. Does amend mean decrease, B, change, C, delete, D, suspend? Use context clues within the sentence to determine what amend means. Go ahead and push pause now and circle your answer. If you're ready to, you can also answer the bonus. How do you know? You can use a complete sentence um, to get full credit for the bonus. Okay, if you chose B, then you are correct. Go ahead and Answer the bonus, how do you know, in a complete sentence now if you haven't done so already. I'm not going to give you the bonus because it's extra credit. So I expect you to do it in a complete sentence on your own. Push pause if you need to. Otherwise, move on to question number four. Number four says, answer the following prompt by writing a complete sentence. If you were Jesse, what would you have done to persuade Winnie not to drink from the spring? Go ahead and answer this in a complete sentence. Remember the rules for answering in a complete sentence versus number five, which says to write a power one in response to the same question. Go ahead and push pause and write your answer on the line. Okay, now go ahead and check your answer to number four, writing a complete sentence to the prompt, if you were Jesse, what would you have done to persuade Winnie not to drink from the spring? From my example answer, if I were Jesse, I would have told Winnie how lonely and bored I was to persuade her not to drink from the spring. This is a complete sentence, and I'm using the language of the question to answer the question, and I'm also giving my reason or my answer of what I would have done. That makes it a complete sentence. Go ahead and answer number five now, which is to write a power one in response to the same question if you haven't done so already. Please push pause, otherwise you're ready to move on to direct instruction. Let's look at my example for a power one in response to the same question. A power one should look something like this. If I were Jesse, there are many things I would have done to persuade Winnie not to drink from the spring. Notice that I'm not answering the question in my power one, but preparing to answer in my P2s, in my power twos. Go ahead and push pause and write it down if you do not already have it. Otherwise, you are ready to move on to direct instruction now. All right, now it's time to review some of the elements of plot. A lot of this should look familiar, but we understand that it might not, and that is why we're reviewing. Take the notes as I am taking them on the screen. First, we have characters. Super easy, right? Characters are the people in the story. Although, of course, it doesn't always have to be a person. It could be a tree. It could be a robot. It's who the story is about. 
Of these, we have a protagonist and an antagonist, normally. These are characters who are against each other, such as an angel and a devil. The protagonist is the most important or central character in the story. Winnie is the protagonist in Tuck Everlasting. Then we have an antagonist. The antagonist is the character the protagonist has a conflict with. Okay. What is a conflict? We know a conflict is a problem. Then we move on to plot. Plot is the pattern of events in the story. It's what's happening. Usually the plot centers on the main character trying to solve or resolve a conflict. Conflicts, problems, may occur with another character. For example, Taylor competes with Devin to win the swimming championship. We know that Taylor is competing with Devin, so it's one person against another person. Conflicts can also incur, occur with a group of characters. For example, Brandon must face down an angry mob to save the dog. So Brandon is against a group of characters. Conflicts can also occur against a force of nature. For example, Simon must dig himself out of an avalanche to survive. So Simon is against the avalanche, which is a force of nature. And lastly, conflicts may occur within a character. So that's a, character, a conflict that a character has with themselves. For example, Darren must battle his fear of water to save his buddy from drowning. Darren is in conflict with himself. He's got a problem with himself. It's his fear of water. From yesterday, we know that characters have traits. These can be revealed by how a character looks, feels, or acts. Sometimes a character's traits affect the plot. That means that they influence it. So for example, the plot of a story may revolve around whether a boy faces his fears bravely and overcomes them or surrenders to his fears. So what a character does influences the events in a story. So who a character is can change the outcome of the story. Make sure that you have all of these notes and if you need to, go back and change your initial rating for this objective. When you are ready to move on, unpause. Now let's think about this idea of a character influencing the plot again. We're going to create this diagram, and it's for the very, very famous story, The Tortoise and the Hare. If you can find the typo on this guided practice and circle it with a star next to it, you will get a bonus point. It was on purpose. Let's see if you can figure it out. So... The story of the tortoise and the hare, very famous one. The tortoise challenges the hare to a race, and the hare is very conceited. He's known as the fastest in the land, and the hare laughs at him and says, you'll never beat me, this is a joke. And so the tortoise says, okay, let's do it. The tortoise and the hare start their race, and instead of starting, the hare goes off to party, while the tortoise moves trudgingly along. He's determined to get to the end. The hare parties, 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 takes a nap. And eventually, <coughs> just as the tortoise is about to cross the finish line, the hare wakes up and realizes that he's about to lose. But it's too late. The tortoise has already won the match because he was focused and he kept going while the hare played around and was not focused. So let's think about this story where we have the tortoise as the protagonist and the hare as the antagonist. We're going to focus on the tortoise. So we'll write in this box right here, the protagonist is the tortoise. Okay, go ahead and make sure that you have that in that box. When you're ready to move on, unpause. Now it's time to think about the character's traits or feelings. So the tortoise, I think about what is he like? Okay, I know that he is slow, but he is, um, he wants to win. Okay, so he's slow, but... He tries hard. These things to me, if I picked an adjective to describe him, tell me that he's determined. That's how he feels. So I would say that the tortoise is determined. He wants to win. Then I move across the chart. Okay, what's his problem? Okay, again, he's slow, but he wants to beat the hare. So he is slow, 
but wants to win. Okay? Now, we think about the tortoise's traits and feelings, and we think about how his character helps to solve the problem. And what the things are that he does to solve the problem, right? Because if he wasn't who he is, he wouldn't do what he does. Okay, so I'm going to think, okay, first, okay, he keeps going. He never stops. He never rests. He just keeps going. He doesn't give up. And then, eventually, he passes the hare, who has been resting. These are the things that he does because he's so determined in order to solve his problem. See how this chart works? So how he is helps to solve his problem. Okay? It's a little complicated, but we're going to practice it a few times, and eventually we'll get it. All right? Go ahead and re-rate your current understanding of today's objective, and when you're ready to move on, unpause.